Welcome to the Round 5 Injury Update presented by AIA Vitality. Um, so from the weekend's games up in Queensland on Thursday, um, we had no real uh, injuries come out of that game. Our players got to enjoy a nice four days break over the, the Easter break, which was good. Um, and we had a little training session yesterday um, and, and all the players that played on the weekend were fine and, and fit and available for this weekend. From that injured list that we've been um, talking about, so Nathan Kruger, a really big week for him. Um, if he gets through full training this week and gets through all of the, the sessions that we've got planned over the course of the week, uh, hopefully we'll see his name on the, in the squad selections over the weekend. Um, so he's put in a lot of work over the last 14 weeks, Krugs. Uh, that's where he's at now with his shoulder. He's been doing contact for around about the last four or five weeks um, and been in full training for the last two weeks. So it's really positive for Krugs. Um, we're not expecting any issues over the course of this week, so we're hopefully we'll see him play some, play some game time on the weekend. <clears throat> um, Will Kelly's had a concussion, so he missed last week's game. Um, he's been in the, in the AFL protocol, um, which we know is around about seven or eight stages, um, 12 day minimum. So um, he's now past the time frame and he's just still working through the stages. So non-contact training at the moment, he'll get in some contact work by the end of the week. Um, and then if he doesn't have any problems with those things, he'll hopefully be available for the weekend, but we've just got to wait and see whether he can go through that protocol absolutely symptom free. Aiden Beggs had the back injury, which kept him out the last few weeks now. Um, and he's back completing a lot of training now. He's not doing contact work at the moment, but he's doing all the kicking and all the open field movement type drills. Uh, we're just really building his training volumes and his training load now. He missed quite a, a bit of a chunk with the, with the back issue. He was in and out of training for a period of two or three weeks. So we're trying to get him a good month of training before he returns to play so that we can set him up for a really, really big um, uh, back three quarters of the season. Um, so not this week for Beggy, um, but we're hopeful either next week or the week after once he starts to build his volume and get into more training. <clears throat> and Arlo Draper with that concussion, again he's progressing, was really really slow early on um, with sympt being symptomatic, um, but he's starting to progress now and he's progressing through the stages now symptom free, which is really really positive. Um, he'll be in non-contact training this week and then we'll hopefully introduce some contact next week and then be available sometime after that. Uh, Mason Cox still a TBC, so we know that he's on complete rest at the moment with that spleen injury. Um, which caused some internal issues. Got a follow-up review early next week, which will be able to provide an update post that, um, which really clears him of any sort of uh, further damage that's happening in that, in that internal um, area. Um, so that'll clear us whether we can start training or not. So it's really just a status quo for Mason until next week. Then we've got Darcy Cameron with that MCL. Uh, so he's still walking around in the brace at the moment. Um, and then we'll hopefully re remove the restrictions on the movement of that brace towards the end of the week this week, which then he can start some gym work. So just positive steps for, for DC. Um, we know what we're dealing with with these MCLs. They're pretty uh, predictable in their rehab processes early on. So we're just waiting um, till he gets more um, freedom of movement in that knee before we start his rehab next week. Howie's had really positive uh, steps taken in the past week and in fact he was in at the club yesterday um, which was good to see his smiling face around the place again and, and involved in the meetings and involved in the football program um, without any activity at the moment. He's got some follow-up reviews this week to make sure that infection that, that reared its head around about 10 days ago is all clear. Uh, signs are really, really positive at the moment. Once it gets cleared from that, um, he'll get the stitches out from some of the surgeries that he's had um, and, uh, and then hopefully be free to start his rehab. So again, the bone is healing really well. The plates and the screws are unimpacted by some of that um, stuff that happened uh, with, with illness and infection. Um, so it was just dealing with that part of it. Once he comes out of that, uh, once he gets the stitches removed and gets cleared for activity, then we can start to really build up his lower body work. Um, he's still limited in the movement he's got in his hand, so he's with a therapist doing a lot of hand strengthening and rehab for that forearm hand area. Um, but the lower body stuff will be fine, so hopefully we'll see him out running on the track uh, by early next week. Lipinski with his shoulder, again, he's around five week mark now. So he's doing really light rehab, but unable to start the full rehab yet. We wait till the six week mark for that. He's out running now, so he's on the track just uh, cutting laps at the moment, which is good. Um, showing, showing all of his strengths, Lipper, with the, his ability to run and the way he gets to work on that part of his game. Um, so he's building up his running volumes at the moment, which is really positive for his return should, uh, when it comes later on. Um, but we just have to wait another week before we start the full on rehab with Lipper. And Charlie Dean's progressing really, really well, actually. Um, he's seen some specialist offside at the moment to, uh, to work through podiatry and, 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 and foot issues and, and looking at how he, how he moves and how he puts pressure through his foot. We know this is the third time that this area has been affected since he, in his time with us. So we're really doing our due diligence in going out and seeking really uh, high quality expert opinions on this. And we're getting back some really good results, really good things to work on for Charlie, which is good for in this part of his rehab. Uh, we're seeing some weaknesses in the way that he moves and we're addressing those weaknesses and seeing some improvements. So it's really positive steps at the moment for Charlie. Again, Again, this is a longer term injury uh, with the way we're going to build him up, but he's, he's making some really good progress in the early stages. 
Uh, thanks for listening. That's all for the round five injury update.